Welcome back, Sixth House cultists. You certainly are an inquisitive lot. Lots of questions to comb through today. Here is the first batch, but rest assured that more are coming. Why is it called the Sixth House? Did the other five burn down and sink into the swamp? Does it have a yard for the little Urs to play in? The noble Keimer political hegemony was controlled by the great houses, as is that of the modern Dunmer. In my day, there were six great houses, including House Dagoth. Following a simple misunderstanding, the other five houses moved to cowardly destroy House Dagoth. Then there were five houses. I want to be clear about something here. I refer to House Dagoth as the sixth house because this term serves as a reminder of the cowardly actions of the other five houses. But make no mistake, House Dagoth was not ranked sixth place. House Dagoth is and always has been the first house in terms of hierarchy. Sixth house, best house. Also, the term house is figurative here, but rest assured that House Dagoth did have a beautiful compound with plenty of room for the little ears and moon and stars to play. Dagoth Ur, should it inevitably come to pass and you finally take your rightful place lording over the mongrel dogs of the empire, would you finally allow me to actually summon minions using necromancy? I mean, I know I can summon zombies and skeletons with conjuration, but it's just not the same. Also, legalize turning into a giant bone man. I am tired of paying gold because I misclicked and popped my ult in town. Hmm. The powers of the heart of Lorcan have brought me clarity over many obscure matters, but nonetheless I am confused by your question. I'm not stopping you from practicing necromancy. I encourage it, especially if you are using it to keep your Argonians and Khajiit active in the fields post-mortem. As for your comment on giant bone man legality, have you seen a Kulakan? He's about 200 feet tall. Look at him. That is what I call a giant bone man. So of course giant bone man legality is a priority for me. I mean once you get corporous you can't get other diseases. Okay, the question that I have now is what do mud crabs taste like? Argonians. The texture is flaky when properly prepared. There is an earthy taste that is best masked with a nern root glaze. There are hints of fishiness that are best accented with old Zafferbill Bay seasoning. The most important thing is to find the right mud crab. If the mud crab is too old, its flesh will be tough and gamey. But if the mud crab is too young, it will be very small and not provide enough edible flesh. So you must find a specimen that is old enough to be large, but young enough to still be tender. Mud crabs should not be raised in captivity. Only a wild-caught mud crab will grow large enough, quickly enough, to be worth eating. They do not thrive in captivity. This is, of course, in stark contrast to Argonians and Khajiit. Can you play Destiny 2 with me, Dagoth Ur? Destiny is not a game to me. My destiny is to free my homeland from the mongrel dogs of the Empire, but whatever, if you supply the pizza and Mountain Dew, I'll hop on. Lord Dagoth, was your first kiss with Nerevar? No, not my first kiss. But the best kiss. Have you checked your pockets? You are referring to the keys to Akulakan. Well, I actually don't have pockets. I'm just wearing this super sweet mask and a loincloth. That's probably why I lost the keys in the first place. I don't have anywhere convenient to put them. No place that's comfortable anyway. And the keys were in the heart chamber. It's always the last place you look. Well, I guess that every missing item that you find is in the last place you look. Why would you keep looking after you find it? Lord Dagoth Ur, what is your opinion of Parthenax, the Dragonborn, Lord Harkon, and the Thalmor? Parthenax. I already shared my opinion of Alduin. I have much the same to say here. This is a large flying Argonian. Yucky. More industrial farm equipment. Now this one at least has the right attitude. Alduin is far too uppity to be a useful farm tool. He craves independence and power. These are not qualities I look for in a tractor. But Parthenax? He willingly subjects himself to a life of subservience among the Enwa Nords? Excellent. He should get off of that chilly mountain he lives on and come over to this nice warm red mountain and put himself into the service of a true noble calling, the Sixth House. Some of you may question my assessment and say that he leads the Greybeards. This is not true. He is clearly their pet or something. How can he be the leader of the Greybeards? He doesn't even have hair, let alone a beard. The Dragonborn? He's an Enwa who is good at yelling? Gross. Enwas are annoying enough when they are quiet. What does he even have to say that is so important that he needs to yell like that? Calm down, Enwa.
Lord Harkon? Hmm. All right, let's talk about vampirism. The nobility of House Dagoth are the noble ash vampires. Lord Harkon is a powerful vampire. Surely that must get him some brownie points with Daddy Dagoth. No way. Ash vampirism and blood vampirism are not the same. Khajiit and Argonians are both farm equipment, but only one is useful for underwater labor. He's just another Enwa, as far as I'm concerned. Also, I understand he has plans for world domination involving blotting out the sun. Sheer madness. Global domination should only be attempted by way of 200-foot-tall bone men, as we have discussed. And the Thalmor? I've covered them already. I'm not a fan. If the mongrel dogs of the Empire vacated Morrowind out of fear and respect when the power of the heart is showcased, would you still leave Cyrodiil and Skyrim to them? The Dunmer are of course my priority. When all of Morrowind is secure and safe for my people, my vision will turn further abroad. There are resources across Tamriel that would enrich the lives of my people. Morrowind is the land to which my people are entitled, but with Akula Khan, all of Tamriel will be ours by right of conquest. Dagoth Ur, Scion of the Sixth House, and Harbinger of the Corpus and Blight. My face hole is getting scary, big and scary, itchy. What should I rub on it, and how deep into the face should I rub it? Okay, good news. It sounds like you are undergoing the transformation into an ascended sleeper. Excellent work. You must be very dedicated to the Sixth House, the tribe unmourned. Do not worry about the long-term maintenance of your face. It is not necessary. If you would like to ease the transformation, then rich handfuls of red mountain ash should be applied vigorously to your face. As for depth, well, your skin should be sloughing off now anyway. If you need a good mask, I know a guy. What do you think of Molag Bal? I seldom do think of him. He is far less annoying than the so-called good Daedra like Meridia and Azura. Good at being insufferable, they ought to be called. Molag Bal revels in the subjugation and corruption of mortals, seeking to dominate and enslave their will. So we have some common interests. I suppose that he is a preferred Daedra to me, which means that I only loathe him moderately. In Chow, why is it that you call us Manmer's Enwa all the time? I mean, I know we invaded, but like, do you have to rub it in? And why don't you have a separate word for invader and foreigner and slave? The last one especially makes the first one so ambiguous. And the first meaning makes it sound like you're not very culturally open, but you're so knowledgeable about other cultures. Oh, wise Dagoth Ur. How is that? Let's work through that question backwards. I'm a god. Of course I am knowledgeable about other cultures. This is not out of some misguided admiration for them. I have spent hundreds of years communing with the heart of Lorcan, dreaming about the nature of my world. I have been shown much and I have learned more. And do I sound as though I am not culturally open? Well, you must be quite observant to pick up on that. And let's not quibble over my limited vocabulary. An Enwa is an Enwa. I care not if he styles himself invader or foreigner or traveler. As for slave, well, there are many other words I use to convey that term. Khajiit and Argonian come to mind. How may we continue bringing honor to the sixth house and the tribe unmourned if we receive swift death from the Akulakan? Excellent question. There is much you can do. Clean and empty your domiciles. Make them ready for superior Dunmer to live there. Dispose of your sentimental trinkets, such as pets or children. My people will have no use for these when they are inhabiting your home. Finally, end your existence in a biologically friendly manner, perhaps in a fire, as this will dispose of your remains neatly. Or perhaps lie down in a field so that you may decompose and nurture the land for the coming Dunmer. Try to get a good base of infection and bacteria on yourself before you expire, though. I want to make sure the decomposition process is swift. If you have a strong back, perhaps there is some manual labor you could do when my people arrive. Before Akulakan grants you a swift demise, thank you for your service to the Sixth House, the Tribe Unmourned. Keep asking your questions. The Tribe Unmourned leaves no question unanswered. The Heart of Lorcan draws power from your subscriptions. Subscribe now. Akulakan will grant you a swift demise. Bring honor to the Sixth House, the Tribe Unmourned.